It's gorgeous weather in Seoul today and I'm off to do an ink workshop. I've been feeling a bit better today than what I was the last few days and hopefully this cold is over. I've been taking this stuff to help my cold. I'm not sure what's in it but it tastes terrible so that means it's working, right? The ink workshops at Dominant Ink, which is in a little satellite city outside of Seoul that seems to be full of publishers and other book-related um, businesses. It took about an hour to get there, but most of it was on this bus, which was quite a pleasant trip. Before the workshop, of course, I had to have coffee. And so I called into this amazing cafe slash art gallery slash shop and got to have some lunch and a look around at all the stuff that they had on display. I even ended up buying a couple of little things. When I asked about things to do in Seoul, one of my viewers, Ajoy Lee, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, suggested a visit to Dominant Ink to mix my own ink colours. That definitely sounded something I was interested in, especially after going to the Kakamori Ink Workshop in Tokyo. It's good to go somewhere else and compare how they did things. I turned up for the day, I was the only one there, and it was a really fun activity, quite different to what I experienced in Tokyo, a lot more casual and um, just as much fun. First you add the base to the mixture, quite a bit of the base colour, well it's not a colour, it's just a base that's clear. and. I should be doing this on the scales. They left me alone to mix my colours, which was quite nice. Um, there were people around, I could ask for help if I needed it. I started off, I wanted to create a really dark blackish red. I automatically go to turquoise type colours when I am buying or mixing inks, so I thought something a bit more vampire-esque could be fun. When I was at Kakamori, you just mixed up a small sample of the ink colour and then they made the full quantity for you, but at Dominant Industries, I just had to mix the full cup, which I thought was a bit wasteful. I was really worried about wasting their inks, but they were like, no, go for it and gave me a jug to throw in all my reject colours. The workshop cost 40,000 won, which is about um, $40 Australian. And that included mixing and taking home two ink colours. So I thought it was really good value for money. I got a recipe sheet to write down the um, quantities of ink I added to make each colour and with space to test the colour out. I really love mixing inks. I love that combination of creativity and science that goes into it and all the fun equipment. Plus at the end you get a gorgeous bottle of ink to take home with you. For my second in colour, I went to my standard turquoisey blue, a uh, dark turquoisey blue. I had a specific colour in mind that I wanted to get 
and came very close to getting what I wanted. I decided that the dark red that I'd created was a little bit on the pink side so decided to play around and try and get that a bit more of a red red rather than a pinkish red that involved a lot of experimenting, adding colours and just seeing what I could do with them. I'm just playing around here. At the end they told me that my sheet, my recipe sheet was too messy and they made me write it out again. <laughs> it was like being back at school. I got to name both my colours and so I decided to name them after our dogs, Hamish and Luna. I wore gloves for the whole process and look at my hands. At the end my ink recipe was sealed up and added to the ink library that they keep at Dominant Industries. I'm off to shop for some other art materials and I was told this was the shop to go to in Seoul. They had a very good range of art materials, the sort of things you would find in an art shop anywhere. So your basic paint ranges and pencils, all the major pencil brands. And the prices were slightly cheaper than what I play in Australia. I think even slightly cheaper than you pay somewhere like Jackson's Art. So it's kind of worth going and doing a bit of a stock up while you're there. On the other hand, there was nothing that I really specifically wanted, unlike when I went to Japan where one of my intentions for the trip was to stock up on acrylic gouache because it's so cheap. It's made in Japan and they sell it so cheaply. But in Korea, I couldn't even really think of any Korean specific art brands or products apart from, I think, Shidhan and Munkyo Crayons and yeah, you can sort of do that Korean style art which has a lot of metallic and that in it which isn't my kind of thing. So I did yeah to stock up on a few things that I needed. This is my Korean art haul. I mainly bought restocks and just things that I needed. I didn't really find anything specifically Korean that I needed to buy while I was there. But yeah, just a few bits and pieces. I actually did swatching a swatching video while I was still in Seoul, but unfortunately I was using the handheld camera and it came out so shaky that I thought oh, it will just make everyone seasick. <laughs> so I'm going to refilm that now and show you exactly what I bought while I was in Seoul. We'll start off the Stabilo Stab Illo Woody 3-in-1 pencil. I've got a bunch of these, but I saw a grey, grey one when I was in Seoul. And I thought, wow, grey. Don't have that. It's actually a little bit silver, but it's not too shiny. I have used this stuff while I was away, so some of it's got been used. This seems to have a bit of other colour still on them where I've layered it, the colours attached. So we'll just put that down. I'll go and grab my water pen in a little minute and see how that works when it's wet. But we'll just leave that for now. Then with the uh, Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils, these were mainly restocks. My, I'll call this Add Pink. It's yeah, not going to even try and pronounce that, but add pink. Um, yeah, I had this already. It was running, getting really short, so I got a restock of that one. Then the dark indigo pencil. I've got a few of these, but I figured I should get another one because I get worried about running out. I think if there was, like, you know, an impending apocalypse or something... And everyone else was out getting drinking water or stocking up on food. I'd be out in the shops 
stocking up on dark indigo pencils because I always worry that I'm gonna run out. Okay, I got this warm brown earth. It's really hard with the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils to find a brown that's not really chalky. I, like most of the other pencils, I'm not sure if you can see or if you've used them and you know yourself, they're really creamy and nice. And then the browns are just a bit chalky and not nice. I was in the shop and they had a lot of signs up saying no testing, no testing. But I didn't want to buy a brown without testing it. So I actually got, I was buying some of these and I was just secretly testing it on the paper, on the crayon like that. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't want to buy it without testing it out first. Then I got this green. I don't really have a bright green and I love this. It just gives such a nice pop of green. It's a lovely spring colour. I think it's actually called spring green. Yes, yeah, spring green. So that was just, these two were restocks and these two were just topping up my colours with stuff I didn't already have. Then again, just, I mentioned before I went away in my packing video that I wanted a yellow in the Faber Castell Albert Jura watercolour markers. And I got the set but that only had the green yellow in it so i was tossing up whether to buy this one the cadmium yellow or this one the dark chrome yellow and i thought hey just buy both treat yourself so i did <laughs> and i'm glad because they're very different yellows then i got this pink carmine carmine mm which is actually more of a dark red and then this I had a lighter green and I grabbed a second green these were quite reasonably priced I think they were about four dollars each which in Australia you're probably paying about eight dollars for them I think even on Jackson's art they're about six or seven dollars so Definitely worth stocking up on those while I was there. And then I grabbed some of the Mungio. That's a whole bind that I already took with me. I'll put them all in the same box to keep them safe. Mungio. These were 80 cents each, these. And I've got them in this box. I need to find somewhere better to put them because they're hard to get out. I've got the large, not large, like a 12 pack of the Mungio crayons. I quite like using them. They're a good cheap crayon and I just thought I'd grab some more colours and just try to get them out of this box. It's nice that they package them up so well, not so easy to get them out of a box now. So yeah, this is not Holbein Artist Watercolours, it's just that they've reused the box. So what did I get in these? 80 cents each. Such a bargain. And I actually like these better than the Sennelia crayons that are like $500 per pop. I'm not sure if you can see that. That's uh, cream. I think it's actually called cream. Cream. These are made in Korea too. So it's nice to get something that was locally made while I was traveling. Next up we have the light grey. So soft and nice. Then the... It says char, it says charcoal, but that's not how you spell charcoal. C-H-A-C-O-L-E. Mm -hmm. A bit confusing, but I blends it nicely together. Boom. This one is lemon green. Again, a nice, very similar to that spring green I got in the luminance. I'll just try blending that in with the cream. Beautiful. Then orange. I might already have orange in the set that I bought. I wasn't sure. So I grabbed this. And then I'll try blending that.
and lastly I got the Scarlet. This is such a great red. Okay, I'm back with a brush and I also found this other... I put this in a different pencil case for some reason, but I also bought this which is just grey. So that's sort of the mid-tone between that light grey and the charcoal. So, yeah, seven of those. And now I'll just try adding some water to the woody. getting that slightly grey. Now this is something really exciting that I discovered when I was playing with this before, which is if you layer the Caran d'Ache pencils over the woody crayon and add water, the Caran d'Ache pencils go, like they dissolve, the pigment dissolves with the, the woody crayon. So that's something really useful to know. Exciting discovery. So, hmm. Feels like the where the indigo pencil was laid on top starts becoming water soluble. That's really interesting. Oh, I've just discovered something. Wow. So yeah, where I put the dark indigo pencil directly onto the paper, it's stayed so solid like you would expect. Where I put it over the woody, it's sort of merged into the the woody. That looks like a smiley face. <laughs> oh, I'm going to make use of that in the future. Okay, so there were a few other things I bought while I was in Seoul that weren't part of my big art shopping trip. I got... This is just a cute little tin. It's got gummy bears on it. And I think this might be good. I hope it fits my crayons in. So hit them. Then just a couple of stickers. I put one on my sketchbook. Hey, tiger, don't freak out. Stay cool. And then these two. And I showed it this in one of my other videos, but this is just a notebook I bought. A guide to good behavior. I thought I might use this for journaling but I don't really journal all that much. But it's yeah good little sketchbook anyway. Papers a decent thickness and it's a nice size for carrying around. And then of course I got these the two inks that I made. Do a little swatch of those. So I'll go back to my swatching page. I'll get that water. I haven't opened these. I was just terrified of having them in my luggage and them spilling and ending up with ink all over everything that I've taken with me. Just get a little bit of that in the lid. And that's the Hamish colour. Nice dark red. Oh, there's a little well. I didn't realise that in the bottle. It's one of those bottles that have a little well in the top so that you're not know, having too much ink coming out. It just sits in the well at the top. I'm not sure how that'll come off on camera but you yeah, have the little well there that you can dip into and I think it makes the ink a bit more spill proof. Really cool to sum up the shape of these bottles. Nice teardrop. So that's the first colour that I made. Then secondly, the lunar colour. Get 
some of that in there. Dark and more concentrated. I'm pretty happy with both the ink colours I've made. They're quite cute colours. And I think I'll get a lot of use out of them. They're not water proof and they aren't I'm not sure about the light proofness I didn't ask so I might have to test that out and see if they are light proof so that's my Korean art haul thanks for joining and I'll see you next time